Hello everyone, welcome back to the Zeko Football Channel. Newcastle absolutely obliterated Sheffield United by 8 goals to nil on the weekend, but I believe it was a tactical tweak that allowed Newcastle to unlock their true selves. And that's exactly what we're diving in today. If you're new to the channel, please make sure that you subscribe, you like the video, and turn on those notifications. It's okay, I'll wait. Just scroll down, click that like, click that subscribe, and thank you very much. It's of course very much appreciated. And now, let's talk Newcastle. Everybody is talking about how Newcastle did an amazing job against Sheffield United, and they did. But there is something else I think they need to mention and talk about as well, and that's the fact that Newcastle have actually got three clean sheets in their last three games. And that is a huge contrast to the game against Man City, the game against Liverpool, and the game against Brighton, where they conceded a hatful of goals. So what's changed? Eddie Howe has actually implemented a different tactical tweak as well as a personnel change to try and shore up Newcastle at the back but then still allow them to progress the ball forwards. And this has changed to allow them to get wins against Brentford, a draw against AC Milan and a victory against Sheffield United, the most notable one being that 8-0 win. Let's focus on the Sheffield United game because I think they did a brilliant job of unlocking their potential in Bruno Gemmerich. I think he was somewhat hampered by the fact that he needed to play a low, deep-lying six role. And with the addition of Sean Longstaff to then move into the central base of midfield, it allows Bruno to be able to move forwards, to continue the progression and to maintain that attacking prowess further up the pitch. Let's have a look at the player stats because I think this is one of the best games that Bruno has actually played. Here he is, he's got one goal, one assist, two tackles, which is very good, high pressing up the pitch, 86% passing accuracy, 8 out of 10 duels won, 2 aerial duels, and he played 81 minutes during the match. It's a sensational performance, but I think it was enabled by Sean Longstaff. If we have a look at the average positions for Newcastle, you can see this is the midfield three. We're focusing on that for now. Sean Longstaff looks like he's sitting next to Bruno Gemmerich, and he is to a certain extent. But what actually happens is that Sean Longstaff drops a little bit deeper. This allows Bruno to progress forwards up the pitch just him moving 10 yards and then Sean Longstaff dropping that 10 yards gives something of a diagonal line in terms of the midfield presence of Newcastle it allows Elliot Anderson to then move forwards as well and all of a sudden Newcastle have a defensive awareness in front of the back four they have Bruno going forwards that little bit more to dictate play round to the sides and they also have another midfielder to be able to enter the box now don't get me wrong, Sean Longstaff does into the box as well, we know he scores in this game, and that's because he's able to have the license to be able to move forwards, but that's only with the certainty that Newcastle have complete possession of the football. Now, Bruno Gamaraish's average position and his heat map is this, but he's moving forward that little bit more. He's actually on the more attacking end of the halfway line, whereas if we actually have a look at Longstaff's position, we can see that he's preferring to be on the more defensive side. This is a tactical change that Eddie Howe has made because normally Tonali would have played in Longstaff's position. Tonali is a more forward-thinking player and he'd pick up roles in about this area. Now, let's not say that Sean Longstaff can't do that, but he's more defensive-minded than Tonali and this enables Bruno to then go forwards and not have to focus on that defensive six role that I mentioned earlier. Elliot Anderson has also had a little bit of a role change out on this left side and he's further forwards as you can see he's actually got quite the heat map over on this left hand side forward into the attacking opposition area and it means that Newcastle as I said have a more diagonal presence when it comes to the midfield they're vertical they're not flat they're not horizontal and it allows them to progress that ball a little bit further the tactical tweak is a small one but it's one that makes sure that Longstaff is a more defensive unit allowing Bruno to then go forwards they have defensive solidity at the back again and now they have the ability to go forwards they have the five players going forwards they have the five players defending including the back four and Sean Longstaff and it just creates a better balance for this Newcastle side going forwards. Now personnel wise this could change but I'm not necessarily sure that Sandro Tonali can play this role. I was actually impressed with the way they integrated Longstaff and Tonali instead of Elliot Anderson and it gave a better balance in the midfield against Milan. It'll be interesting to see how it goes forward but so far Sean Longstaff has unlocked the way that Bruno can then go forwards and then come back. It allows him to be more of a box to box than 
an actual holding six and it unlocks the attacking capabilities of Bruno while also enabling him to drift back when he needs to and put in those tackles. A small tactical tweak, but it's made the world of difference. Let's have a look at some in-game scenarios now. I just think that'll showcase what I'm talking about a little bit better. Let's focus on this image first. And the first thing I want to mention is Alexander Isak's terrible body language here. This is not good enough for a team that is looking to be aspirational. I understand that you're losing. It's not great, but the body language needs to be a little bit better. I'll give him some slack because I don't think anyone had a great game, but overall it needs to be better in my opinion. The second thing that I want to mention is the midfield three. This is the midfield three actually. You can hover over all of them and overall it looks okay. But actually when you look at it in a bit more detail, the distance between the midfield three and the back four is far too much. Far, far too much. And then you've got the idea of Bruno Gimaraes actually wanting to press in this scenario. Look, he's ready to go. He's ready to go forwards to try and press Billy Gilmore. Sean Longstaff is not set and neither is Elliot Anderson. And this means that not only are you opening up a channel for the likes of Billy Gilmore to play a pass through the heart of your midfield, but at the same time, they just don't look quite organised. A depth of midfield, meaning that Longstaff dropping in, Elliot going forwards, just gives them the ability to have different views and different lanes cut off. The amount of Brighton players that are able to receive a pass here is criminal, if I'm honest. You've got Joao Pedro, you've got Matoma. On the right-hand side of your screen, you can't see him, but you've actually got Evan Ferguson, and it's just not good enough. If you bypass this midfield three, all of a sudden you've got your back four completely exposed and that's exactly what happens. They had to drop off. Edwin Ferguson had far too much time because the pressure was not there from the midfield three. If one of them drops off, he at least can buy some time for the rest of his teammates to try and close down Edwin Ferguson. This did not happen. Let's move on to a different scenario. This is the game against Brentford and automatically something has changed. They're on the break here and as you can see, you've got Anthony Gordon out on this right hand side about to receive the pass. As they're going forwards, and just want to highlight a couple of players. This is Elliot Anderson and this is Bruno Gimaraes, both moving forwards towards the box. And then, out on this left hand side, you can't quite see him, but you've actually got Sean Longstaff backing up the play. And what I really like about this is that he's just dropped a good 5-10 yards. And this allows Bruno to then go forwards. This is what I was talking about on the heat map. It allows Bruno to unlock himself and then drive forwards. And this doesn't necessarily come from anything, but really, I like this idea. Two players will be able to go forwards. You've got one that's really holding the line back. And I just think it's a, it makes so much more sense defensively. It just helps them out massively. Let's now talk about another game. This is the game against in AC Milan, I should say. Milan in the Champions League, their first Champions League game. And while the image isn't necessarily brilliant, this is Rafael Leao. This is Sean Longstaff. Now, if Sean Longstaff does not pick up the, this position, Sven Botman is not coming around to cover quick enough. Fabian Scher is already out of the game due to a pass. And Tonali is out of the game. Bruno is, has moved forwards. But it's the defensive stability and awareness of Longstaff to be able to make that run with the likes of Rafael Leal that means that Newcastle were able to keep this at a nil-nil. If Sean Longstaff is not there, Rafael Leal is in. But it was the determination from Longstaff, the defensive awareness that allows Newcastle to stay in this game. It was very, very good stuff. But again, like I mentioned, Longstaff is key in this scenario and his defensive role or his more defensive role was very much needed in this scenario. Let's have a look at one final one. And this is Alexander Isak driving with the ball. This is actually leading up to the Bruno Gimaraj goal. Here you have Elliot Anderson and here you have Bruno Gimaraj. Following up on the play is the man that I'm talking about, and that's Sean Longstaff. Now, what ends up happening is that Longstaff is able to move forwards. He drives into a central position. Bruno Gimaraes moves round into a more right-handed penalty area slot, and the ball comes back to Longstaff. It deflects, goes over to Gimaraes, and he scores. But again, 5-10 yards behind the other two, and it means that Newcastle can still have pressure going forwards, but they have a defensive solidity that allows them to maintain their balance in their side. Let me give you guys a visual representation of what I mean. So this is obviously the Newcastle United side. The numbers don't necessarily matter. It's more about the formation and where everything goes, but this is Anderson, this is 
Grimorage and this is Longstaff. Now I've got them here in a stable midfield three. This is somewhat stagnant, somewhat flat, and it's also where they are generally positioned on certain occasions. This is generally the formation they played when they played against AC Milan. I've seen them running backwards towards goal. Tonali was in place of Anderson at this point. However, they have played like this before. What I'm actually mentioning to you is although they can move from side to side and shuffle across very, very well, they can also go up and down the pitch together. But generally, when they move forwards, they actually leave a lot of space in behind. This can be mitigated by the movement of one of the side central midfielders. In this case, what we're talking about is Longstaff dropping back a little bit deeper. Anderson is then able to go forwards, and what he ends up creating is something that looks like this. Bruno Guimaraes is in the centre of the pitch, Longstaff is a little bit deeper, and Anderson is a little bit further forwards. Longstaff can then shuffle across to be able to cover Guimaraes' central defensive position, and Guimaraes can then go forwards. His ability to dictate play is much better than Longstaff's, and although Longstaff can then drive himself into the box whenever he sees fit, and whenever Newcastle have dominant possession of the ball, it also means that Guimaraes Gimaraes is able to dictate play whenever he wants. Anderson is then able to have almost a freer role and something that Tonali I think could really benefit from later on. But the role that he can play is also about darting into the box and linking play with the likes of Gordon, with the likes of the striker, in this case it's Callum Wilson, it could be Isak, but it's the ability to have four or five defenders and four or five attackers. They split and then allow each other to be able to progress the ball forwards and then go back. The solidity in behind this Newcastle defence and just in front of the back four is something that's extremely important. Also allowing the box-to-box -box midfielder and Bruno Guimaraes to be able to move forwards and backwards and play as he pleases. It's something that is simple, but it unlocks Newcastle to a completely different level. And I believe it was one of the main reasons why they were able to win against Sheffield United, who have given a lot of teams a lot of problems so comfortably in that 8-0 scoreline. It's quite brilliant from Eddie Howe, really, and it's something that I think Newcastle can really benefit from going forwards. It's a brilliant piece of tactical ingenuity and something that allows a hard worker like Longstaff to maintain a regular place on the side. And in this actual instance, he's keeping Sandro Tonali out of the team due to his brilliant, good performances, his defensive awareness and stability, and his ability to drive into the box great from Newcastle but let me know what you guys think in the comment section below how have you found this transition and do you think Longstaff deserves a longer term place in the side where do you fit Sandro Sonali let me know your thoughts in the comment section below I would love to hear from you thank you ever so much for watching I hope you enjoyed I hope you learned something new and I hope to see you in the next one but until then take care